So we have uh, Mr. Arvind Paranspe, Director of Nehru Planetarium, Mumbai, here with us to tell about the lunar occultation of Venus. Uh, so we uh, will shift to the hangout with him. Arvind, welcome to uh, this webcast, and we are eager to hear your uh, expert comments and uh, any information that you want to share with us about this event. Uh, thank you, Samir, for uh, taking all this trouble and uh, um, having this uh, webcast and discussion. First of all, I must say that it was a most enjoyable day for me because uh, for the last, uh, I think, few months, we have been talking about this event and finally we thought that uh, we could do live uh, webcast of the event. And I'm glad that from three different places, that is uh, from Mumbai, uh, uh, Pune, and then Bangalore, from three different places, uh, at least that is uh, that is what I know, that the live uh, webcast of this uh, occultation was uh, made. And that's a great achievement in some sense. And um, I'm told that from Delhi, it was, uh, they could have done it, but it was overcast, so it was a quite cloudy sky in Delhi. Now, uh, talking about occultations and those who are new to it, uh, I would like to, uh, and particularly those who are the Indians uh, participating in this discussion, I would like to tell them that uh, there is an effort um, uh, from IUCA as well as from ProAm to have as many people as possible to participate in such kind of uh, observational event. One is, uh, these are very predicted events, absolutely predictable. Once you make a prediction, they follow the prediction almost to the uh, fraction of a second okay so you can make plans and uh, you can make plans in advance and um, participate in this event that is one second thing is that it's quite exciting to see this event taking place so uh, as an amateur astronomer uh, we certainly do enjoy these kind of events but there are a uh, few scientific uh, output or followed also from observing such events for example uh, the, the, let, let us see, I mean, if you go back in history, the occultations were the occultation which means eclipses also, because uh, when we have a solar eclipse, it is an occultation of the sun by the moon. And uh, that particular event told us that moon was nearer to the earth than the sun was. Okay. So there were other events such as uh, uh, moon occulting planets, so that told us that how uh, I mean, uh, what body is closer and what uh, which body is far away from us. So that, in that sense, um, uh, in uh, uh, past, people have utilized these occultations for getting more uh, uh, knowledge about our universe. Then we remember that uh, there was this uh, transit of uh, Venus um, uh, uh, took place uh, last year, uh, two years ago actually, and that is also that was used by astronomers to actually estimate the distance between Earth and the Sun. So from many angles, uh, uh, the many viewpoints, uh, such uh, events are important. Uh, coming, coming to uh, present day uh, astronomy, um, uh, one of the best things that uh, amateur astronomers can participate is the occultation of asteroids, uh, sorry, occultation of stars by asteroids and which can take place and these events last for uh, from just about a second to few seconds, sometimes even uh, as much as 25, 20 to 25 uh, seconds. And the importance of such event, uh, event uh, some asteroid event is that one gets a handle on the size of the asteroid. And this is one of the, this is probably the best way of getting the uh, estimate of the size of asteroid. Well, uh, between uh, present day and past event that I told you about, there are many other uh, fallouts of this um, uh, occultation observation, like uh, talking from India's point of view, uh, Professor Vijay Kapahi did a fantastic job of uh, observing the uh, radio occultation of galaxies by the moon and getting their accurate position. So, there are many things one can do, but uh, again, as an amateur astronomer, I think uh, something more, uh, it, it's a very exciting event to observe. I would Great. say that as sort of opening remarks. Thanks, Arvind. Uh, uh, how was your experience with uh, the uh, occultation today at Mumbai? 
because uh, I'm sure you have been awake since really early morning. <laughs> no, actually, um, 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 uh, I, I, one person or, or some people would talk to me like, you know, like uh, director of uh, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru Planetarium, uh, Bangalore, uh, uh, B. S. Shailaja. She always has been telling me that he's after Venus. He's after Venus. <laughs> so I have been observing or looking at Venus in daytime almost for last 25, 30 years. So okay. getting Venus was not something very new. Right. Also, we have, uh, I mean, ourselves we have watched um, a few occultations, and um, uh, then I think I, I also remember that there was one event some years back when we used the Ayuka's uh, terrace from where we watched the uh, event. But in all these things, I mean, we have been using technological uh, advances for our uh, hobby. And that's what we, uh, what has made it very exciting. But uh, as I said right in the beginning, that most exciting part was that there were quite a few groups watching live these events. Right. And people were participating. And uh, the cost involved is not much. Because if I remember at, uh, when we did it some 15, 20 years ago, uh, we number of times we thought whether I should break open the web camera or not, web camera or not. But today, breaking open the web camera and putting lens is a, just a trivial job. Everyone does it. But I remember that uh, we thought number of times, okay, shall we do it, should we do it or not. But anyway, uh, so th that's the change which has taken place. I'm glad that so many people have got gathered there. There were some people here also. And also one gentleman, uh, Dan, uh, he's active on our web. Uh, he participated from uh, Germany, so he was live. So in all told, uh, I think it was a very enjoyable experience. That's great to hear, Arvind. In fact, uh, I should mention at this point, since you were talking about the technological advances and uh, the equipments we have at hand, so Ayuka uh, had, uh, with your help, planned uh, this uh, event and uh, we have uh, announced this um, online. And we are yeah. glad and we are thankful to all the 120 viewers who were online <laughs> during the event and they could enjoy it. Uh, of course, this is all possible again uh, with your help and the help of the Jyotir Vidya Parisansthan organization. Uh, of, of, now they are being represented by, right now by a lot of members. I think there are 10 members here, especially uh, 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 Deepak Zoshi and Aniruddha Deshpande have been here since morning and we've been fighting all sorts of Murphy's <laughs> law problems. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> finally, we could set up everything and uh, despite having a little bit of haze, we caught the ingress, which is the time which at which uh, Venus goes inside. Uh, even now, we have a bit of cloud, uh, cloudy sky. Uh, we are hoping to catch uh, Venus, uh, which according to your calculations will come out at 12.22 and our telescope yeah. is uh, right here maybe uh, if I turn my uh, if I just turn the view to our view here we have all the people here and <laughs> say hello please to hello. all the viewers Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so we have our uh, <laughs> group standing by and <clears throat> so it's Deepak Zoshi here <laughs> and all the young diligent members of JVP uh, uh. So we have our telescope trained at it and uh, for uh, some pointers to other amateurs, uh, maybe it's, it's good to learn how to automate a telescope. So we have a very well tracking telescope which has been polar aligned for a few days so that uh, we, can, uh, we can keep catching uh, Venus when it goes yeah. back behind the moon and then we'll keep following it afterwards also. Because this is most important, we cannot see Venus in the broad daylight. Uh, uh, sorry, we cannot see the moon in the broad daylight right now because it is a <laughs> very thin crescent, and therefore it's. I mean, we don't know where Venus is in the sky, so it's very important to have a telescope which can track Venus, yeah. <coughs> and uh, then follow up the egress, which is the coming out from behind the moon's edge. That will be from the dark edge, and we are hoping that uh, we'll be able to catch it. Yeah. But Sameer, I yes. think I'll just make one comment here. Sure. And then, uh, yes, the technological advances are there and I'm really glad that all of you are making you full use of it. Uh, but at the same time, I think uh, 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 people who are gathered there, I think you should take little fun and challenge to spot Venus during the daytime just with their own naked eye. See, uh, some 30 years ago, uh, there was only photographic plates and photographic films. 
and uh, even then uh, and there were no apps okay now presently right. i must also tell you that uh, there is this wonderful app uh, uh, that is you know sky map etc and i i like uh, i feel like foolish actually to put that thing on my telescope in order to get venus right. but uh, but i still get this joy of uh, catching venus in broad daylight without any reference just knowing how much angle it is how much azimuth it should be so i would in that sense i would uh, rather tell amateur astronomers who are gathered there that yes of course the technology is there you can make use of it but uh, consider that people have done it and there is a challenge and charm in uh, locating these things i mean particularly when you know you can see it with the naked eye today i saw it in you know, saw the planet with a naked eye just for a while uh, through passing clouds so it was a challenge so uh, that's what i thought i would uh, like to tell everyone gathered there they consider doing this of course telescopes are there technology is going to go ahead etc etc sure. so there is challenge in doing that yes definitely arvin will do that and we'll uh, probably make an event next month when again uh, uh venus will be there in the sky it is in the morning sky it rises before yes. the sun so it's a morning yeah. star as it is called uh, often uh yeah <clears throat> so uh, there will be a chance again next month when uh, moon might be uh, close by or it might be a few degrees away from the moon uh, in fact saturn was also very close to the moon uh, this month so yeah. all these planets which are there in the sky we will announce uh, when they come close to the moon and then people can follow them up uh, venus is definitely visible in the daytime so we'll uh, take your advice and try to look for yeah. it next month yeah well thank you very much for calling me i enjoyed and uh, it was a very exciting day my uh, there's a lot of other things are happening here so anyway yes. we'll meet again and i i certainly i mean why i enjoyed my people here but i also certainly miss uh, pune i mean i met both the places simultaneously <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's wonderful arvind how you can manage on this multitasking uh, yeah, thanks yeah, bangalore i mean i am part of i was part of bangalore group also at one point in time so anyway great enjoyment yes. thanks so much thanks, uh, thanks. deepa kanero everybody thank you very much uh, great thank you uh, okay. uh, arvind so we'll cut uh, the phone call right now bye yeah. So that was uh, Mr. Arvind Paranjpe from Mumbai, uh, live uh, talking to you, and we are waiting for Venus to reappear at 12:22 p.m. Uh, you can see the uh, digital clock going by uh, on the top of your screen, and we have around 10 minutes left for the egress. So uh, <clears throat> please bear with us. We are going to again uh, try to catch uh, the catch Venus and see how our tracking is going. we we'll get the live view on our uh, camera which is attached to the telescope and with that we'll be able to uh, find out the exact timing of the egress of venus from the location of pune thanks for being with us we'll be back in 5 minutes